Okay, I want to talk today about how to build a hamburger menu. And right here, this is the hamburger menu. And this little animation, this is the thing that I want to focus on. How to create that animated effect using just CSS. No SVG, no sort of pre-built animations in SVG, just CSS and the click event for the JavaScript. Now I do have some JavaScript to handle the showing and hiding of the menu and a little bit of JavaScript for when I resize the screen. So when I drop down, um, or rather when I expand or drop down below 700 pixels, I get the animated effect just automatically happening. So you can see as I go over 700 pixels, it animates to this and the menu shows. And that's just me adding and removing classes. Um, I'm looking at the resize observer, or I'm using the resize observer to track when that change is happening between uh, below and above 700 pixels. And I'm doing an initial check using window.matchmedia. And I'll show you that. So I'm giving you a copy of this. If you look down at the description, this is the finished version of this page. So all the CSS is inside of here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a simpler version of this where I'm just building the hamburger itself and we'll go through the CSS for that. So I'm just adding and removing the class expanded as I click on the body. And by doing that, I'm able to trigger a change in the CSS just because I've added or removed that CSS class. Uh, as I was saying before, the match media, I'm calling this method and I'm passing in a query. So when the page loads, I run this media query and I find out if it's true or false. Based on whether or not it's true or false, I'm either adding or removing that class from the body element. And I'm setting this global variable is expanded to either true or false. You can see I have that declared right here at the top of my script. So true or false for that variable. And I'm going to use that to decide whether or not I should be showing the menu. Now my resize observer right here, basically this is a function that runs every time there's a resize event for the page. Entries will, this is, a, it's basically an array. It's a collection of all the elements on the page that I'm observing. Right after this function, I'm using my resize, resize observer to observe one element. That's the HTML body element. I'm looking at that. This is the only thing that's going to be inside this array. So I'm looping through the array, running this function on the body. Basically, it's the only thing there. And we're going to take a look at the body and say, hey, is the width of the body greater than 700 pixels? Or is it less than 700 pixels? And I'm finding out whether or not that variable has been set to true or false. Based on that, I'm gonna change is expanded to be the opposite, and I will either add or remove that class. So that's what we're doing. As the page is resizing, we're using the resize observer to check when it reaches that 700 pixel point, and then we can change the class and the match media we use for the initial load of the page to know whether we add or remove that class. And then the click event is there to change it. So those are the three things that are happening in the script. That's all there is to the script. So clicking on here to toggle it when we um, expand or shrink. So it's closed right now, the menu is hidden. And when I go above 700 pixels, there we go, it expands. Okay, so that's the functionality behind this. Now for the CSS. I want to take you quickly through an example where I'm going to build this menu. Alright, so let's refresh this, make sure we've got the latest copy. And I'm going to use a class right here. I only have two divs on the page. That's all my HTML. There's two divs. One called box, one called burger. The burger, this is going to be the hamburger menu itself. And this is just a container so I can put a background color and so I can position it somewhere. That's all I'm doing with it. The X I'm going to be adding and removing. You can see as I click here, I'm toggling whether or not that class exists. Or here I can zoom in a little bit here for you. There we go. And as I click, I'm toggling that class, turning it on or off. All right, so let's take a look at the CSS and see what we're doing inside of here. Back into the code for this page. Here it is. Here's our two divs. And in my script, I'm just adding a click to the body to add or remove the class X as I click. 
that's all the script that's on here. So all the work is going to be done in the CSS. My box element, that was the blue background, it's there. I'm using position relative on this, so I'm not going to be moving the box, but it's going to allow me for centering the burger inside of that. Now, the height of this element is 60 pixels, and I've got 10 pixels on the top and the bottom, the left and the right. Um, that means I've got a total of 80 pixels in height inside that box. The burger is going to be placed inside that. I'm using position absolute in combination with relative, so I can say exactly where I want this to be. Now, if we look at the page right now, it's just this little white line. I'm making a little white line. My element is only six pixels tall, and it's 60 pixels wide, and it's got a white background. So basically, I've drawn a small little rectangle, and then I'm using the absolute positioning to move it down. So we've got it centered between the top and the bottom here. That's this top 37. So I'm taking half of the height of the box. Half the height plus the top padding. So 10 on the top plus the 60. Divide the 60 by 2, that's 30. So I've got 40 pixels here. I'm moving it down 40 pixels from the top, but my burger height, to get this perfectly centered, if my burger is, let's ignore that, if my burger little line, that little line in the center, if it's six pixels tall, half of that is three pixels. So I subtract the three pixels from the 40 to get this. So now it is perfectly centered inside that blue box. It's a white line centered vertically. That's all we've got. And then I'm moving it 10 pixels away from the edge, which just matches this padding. Okay, so there we are. We are 10 pixels away from the side and I'm vertically centered here. That's the positioning for the burger. And that's all we have. We've got line height zero, border radius, basically nothing. And I've put a transition on any properties that I'm going to change. This is what's going to let us do the animation. Anything that I change that can be animated will be animated over the course of 0.3 seconds. Now, because I've done absolute and I'm using the before and after elements, I want to create a line above and below this one that I've centered vertically. No content. I don't need content in there. Display block. I want to make sure it goes the same. I'll be able to set a width on it. Position absolute inside of something that's absolute. So its positioning will be relative to wherever this thing is placed. Left zero. So it's going to be right against the left edge of the white line that's there. I'm using less width. 54 pixels here. And the 54 is because I'm going to be adding border on the left and right. My height is zero, but I've got a, so there's no height whatsoever. I've got a width, zero height, and then an extra three pixels on the left and right, top and bottom. Basically what I've done is I've created another space that is six pixels tall and 60 pixels wide. It's the exact same size as this one which is six pixels wide and, or sorry, six pixels high and 60 pixels wide. We've created three elements that are the same dimensions. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the before and after ones, which are sitting exactly on top of that white line, and I'm going to move them. I want to move one of them up and one of them down. Top and bottom set to zero. So I'm going to be moving the before one up and I'm going to be moving the other one down so I just set it to the edges, just in case there was a difference of a pixel, or if I change sizes of something, I want to make sure that I'm moving away from the top edge, moving away from the bottom edge. We've got rotation, zero degrees. That's the default. There is no rotation. And we're going to add a translate command. Translate means from an XY coordinate, how far away do I, I want to move? That point that you're going to move away from is called the transform origin. So the left edge at the top, the right edge at the top. I'm moving away from that point for both of these. I could say bottom here. It's not going to make any difference in this example, but we're going to translate both of these. And I don't want to move in the XY direction anything, but I do want to move down 16 pixels for this one and up 16 pixels 
for this one. So save that, go back, and there we are. There's the three of them. That center one, which has the background, and then these ones built out of borders. One moved up, one moved down. Now, why borders? That's because when we go to do the animation, we want to hide this one in the middle, and then we're going to take these two, the top and the bottom one, and we're going to rotate them and move them slightly to form an X. That's the animation. This one in the middle, I'm not going to be able to use opacity. I'm not going to be able to use uh, display to hide it, because if I do that right here, if I add that X class, so I'm turning it from the hamburger into the X. When I do that, if I use opacity zero, that's going to apply to the before and after. It's going to hide them. Same thing as if I did display none, it's going to hide them. The only thing I can do to hide that one in the middle, because the X doesn't have three parts, it's only got two. It's got a top line and a bottom line that I'm going to rotate to make the X. That one in the middle, I want to hide that, and the way I'm going to hide it is by changing the background color. I mean, we could change it to, you know, purple or pale green or whatever you want. If I add the class, so it's very faint here, let's <laughs> use something that's going to show up a little bit better. Uh, let's say crimson. There we go. You can see as I toggle, I'm changing the color, but I don't want crimson. I don't want that line to show up, but I can use transparent. Now, as I show and hide, I'm going to, or rather click on this to add and remove this class X. I'm going to be hiding and showing that middle one. Then all that's left to do is the rotation and the movement for the top and the bottom. So that's step one. When we add that class, we hide the center line. For the before and after, I've got a note here about rounding the corners. If we look at these, you can see they are quite square. What I want to do is when I turn this into the X, I'm going to just round it. It's a, a little minor effect, but I do want to round off each of the line caps. So we will say here that border radius is going to change from the one pixel that it was to six pixels. And I'm going to add this to both of them. Oh, sorry, not border, border radius. There we go. So border radius. And we're going to change it. And if you, if I zoom in, you can probably see this a little bit better. There's a very slight rounding here, but as I add that class, you can see that the corners do change to the, the rounded version. The line cap becomes round instead of square. It's a minor thing, but it's a nice little enhancement. Okay, now once we've got the border radius working, we can work on the animation, which is the second part of this. That's going to be the transform. We're going to want to change it from this, which was having one of them, oops, having one of them above, one of them below, and we're going to rotate them 45 degrees, one up, one down, and adjust them slightly, because if we just do the rotation, they're going to be hanging off the bottom of the page here or the bottom of the bar. So we're going to do a translate and we're going to do a rotate. Now I'm just going to put zero, zero in here and to show what's going to happen. Okay, there we are. Yeah. So here's our animation taking place. And the top one, if you watch it, it's going to be rotating around this point and it drops down to the center and the left edge. And then this one is going to be coming from the bottom up to that middle point. It's going to the transform origin. So the rotation is okay. What we're doing here, we're sort of creating an X. It's not quite centered here. We're going to want to bring these both up so that they're in line with where the top line began. So from the transform origin, we're going to go up those 16 pixels up those 16 pixels and possibly even a little bit further because we want to keep this centered and we might need to bring it in a little bit closer because you can, as you can see here, the X is not in the middle of the two lines. This is longer 
on the angle. So by doing that, if we just bring it up, it's still not going to be an X. It's going to be more of a V with some extra lines hanging off. So by adjusting them in towards the middle of this line, we're going to get the actual X shape. So up 16 pixels, up 16 pixels. There we go. There we are. So we're adjusted. So we're at the right height. They're both going up to where that top line is. And it could still use a little bit more. There's less space here than there is here. So let's change this to 20 pixels up for both of them. Then we're going to move them to the center of where this would be. This center line. I'm going to move this one in and this one in this direction. So we're going to add 10 pixels here, subtract 10 pixels here. There we go. So we're moving 10 pixels to the right and 10 pixels to the left, bringing them both closer to the center line. And there we go. So that's how you create an animated hamburger menu using just CSS. One HTML element here, this burger, this is the whole thing. There's no content inside there. There's just a before and an after. So the size of this gives us that center line, the before gives us the top line, the after gives us the bottom line, and then we're animating using transform origin to control. Now you can change those values. You can use any any sort of translate you want. You can use transform origin in different points. You'll just have to recalculate the values. How far do you want to move them? Do you want to make these things spin twice? There's lots of things that we can do with this. But I will leave you both the original sample, this one, with that working with the script, and I'll also leave you this simpler one. There'll be two code gists linked to down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.